Hey gang, and welcome to today's video, where I will be talking about units and unit conversions. So, to start off, what's a unit? A unit is a standard amount of a measured quantity. And so when we're measuring these quantities, generally we're speaking with respect to a particular dimension, such as length, mass, volume, could be time. Those are just a couple of examples, and there's a lot more. And when we measure these, when we're measuring something and we're using units, there's actually a couple of different systems of units that we could be using. So for example, we could be using SI units, and SI units are the international standard of units. And so that's when we see, for example, we're using meters, kilograms, liters, or seconds. And that's called the metric system. It's a really convenient system because in that type of, in that system, everything operates in a base 10. So if we're converting from, let's say, a meter to a kilometer, we know that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer, right? So that's pretty, it's pretty nice for us. And in, it's a pretty common unit that's used across the world. The other most common system of units is called imperial units or, and, and or U.S. customary units or the American engineering system. It's a little bit of a blur or it's all mixed together because they all derive from English units. And with these units, you may see there's feet, pounds, gallons, seconds. And as you might notice, time is actually pretty consistent across these unit systems. I think it's been standardized that everyone's using seconds as the base unit. Now, one of the differences with regards to imperial units and US customary units and the American engineering system actually falls within the US customary units is that there are minor differences with respect to certain units, particularly volumes, but the majority of units you'll, you'll come across are gonna be pretty similar between imperial and US customary units in terms of their amounts for a particular unit. And for, uh, for most of the, like for anything I'm talking about in this video or future videos, it's going to be with respect to US customary units or as well, or the American engineering system units. And so now that we're a little bit more acquainted with units, I wanted to talk about what do you do with units when they don't match? Ah, hmm. Well, in that case, what we're actually gonna have to do is a unit conversion. So we're gonna have to convert the current unit we have into a different unit that we want. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we're gonna take this example. We're gonna convert 10,000 meters into miles. All right, and 10,000 meters, for some of you, you may have a friend that's really into running and they may tell you, oh, I'm going to run a 10K. And obviously your first response is, oh God, why would I ever wanna run a 10K? I know. But kudos to those who are able to run the 10K, but uh, which is also 10,000 meters. Remember that metric system, really handy. So for any of you that are curious in how far is 10,000 meters in miles, we're gonna do that unit conversion right now. So our first step is that we need to identify the units we're using and the units we need to convert to. And so in this case, we're starting off with meters and we're going to convert into miles, all right? The next step is we need to find a conversion factor that relates the two units together. Now, for us, that's a, it's a nice conversion factor. We know that there's 1,609 meters in one mile. Now, I just wanna give advanced warning that some of the times you will not be able to do a straight conversion from one unit to the next, you may need multiple conversion factors. And that's a lot of the times when you're dealing with obscure units or, or ones that are not commonly used. So just be aware that some of the times if you don't have a direct conversion factor, don't be discouraged. Just go and find a couple of different conversion factors that can get you from your initial unit into your final unit. It's, it's very doable. All right, and so now that we've got our conversion factor, we're gonna go to the third step, which is Convert. So we've got our 10,000 meters. We're now gonna multiply by our conversion factor. We've got one mile over 1,609 meters. And notice, 
I had the mile in the numerator and the, the meters in the denominator. And the reason why is because I need the units for the meters to cancel out. So you see that 10,000 meters would be in the numerator and then that 1,609 meters in the conversion factor is in the denominator. And by doing that, it leaves me with miles, which is what we want. And so in this case, when we multiply everything out, we're going to get 6.22 miles. All right. And so now you know that if somebody's running 10,000 meters or more commonly called a 10K, they're running a little over six miles. Wild. All right. And so now that we've done our, our first unit conversion, what I wanted to do is share some handy conversion factors. And so in, in addition to the one I just showed you on the previous slide, which is 1,609 meters is equal to a mile, we've got, for example, if we're using masses, one pound mass is equal to 454 grams. With respect to lengths, we got that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters and one meter is equal to 3.2808 feet. Now, if we switch over to volumes, what we'll see is that we've got 1,000 liters is equal to one cubic meter or one meter cubed, and one gallon is equal to 3.78 liters. All right, and so these are some basic conversion factors that'll be pretty handy for you to just A, write down, or B, try to memorize, because then you'll be pretty impressive when you do that conversion factor mentally and say, oh yeah, it's about uh, five gallons based on the liters you told me. Now, in addition to having these simple conversion factors, there's a couple that are a little bit more complex that deal with force. So for example, we've got that one Newton is equal to one kilogram times meter per second squared. And we've got that one pound force is equal to 32.174 pound mass times foot per second squared. Now, those force units, you're most commonly going to encounter them when we deal with weight, because a lot of the times we're dealing with Earth's gravity. And so I wanna talk a little bit about weight just to clarify and just describe a couple of pieces that are tied in with weight. And so first, weight is the force applied to an object by gravitational attraction. Right, so visually, I just wanna show, if you have the Earth and you have a, a block, let's say, of a mass M, that Earth is gonna apply a gravitational attraction, so it's gonna pull that block M towards the Earth. And so that force that the Earth is, of the Earth pulling that block is your, is your weight. And the acceleration in this case is due to gravity, G. Now, when we deal with gravity, if you're using metric units, you'll have gravity that's 9.8 meters per second squared. If you're dealing with gravity and you're using the American engineering system, US customary units or imperial units, any of the English unit derivatives, it's 32.2 feet per second squared. And now if we are getting our force in terms of the SI units, we're gonna be dealing with Newtons as I mentioned on the previous slide. And once again, one Newton is one kilogram times meter per second squared. Now, if we're using the American engineering system, force has units of pound force, like weight. And in this case, we're gonna get to pound force. I wanna just use the, the Newton equation, F equals MF. And so when we use this and then we substitute in the respective units, we would have pound mass times foot per second squared. Now just remember that one pound mass times foot per second squared does not equal one pound force. And so you'll actually have to use that conversion that we talked about before in order to get to pound force. Now the kind of cool thing with the English system when they use pound mass and pound force is that because of that conversion factor on earth and only on earth, you actually can use pound mass and pound force or the value of pound mass and the value of pound force interchangeably. Because of that conversion factor, 10 pound mass is also equal to 10 pound force. But that's only on Earth. If you went to Mars or the moon, that no longer would be true. So be careful with that and just remember it's on Earth that you can, use, you can kind of swap between pound mass and pound force. All right, 
And so now I just want to work through another practice problem. This time around, we're going to work with those English units. And so as a reminder, we've got that one pound force is equal to 32.174 pound mass times foot per second squared. And if we're being a little bit more specific about it, it's at sea level and at a 45 degree latitude. And so now we're going we're gonna to try one out for us. We're going to convert 2.59 times 10 to the 10th pound mass times inches per hour squared into the part A, pound mass times foot per second squared. Spoiler alert, we may also convert it into pound mass. Maybe, we'll see. But we're gonna try part A first. So now in part A, we've got our 2.59 times 10 to the 10th pound mass times inch per hour squared. And so in this case, we're gonna first go for the hour, we're gonna convert that into seconds. And we have a conversion factor of one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. But if I look carefully, you may notice something. I have hours squared in the denominator and hours in the numerator. So in order to reconcile this difference, what we actually have to do is we have to square our conversion factor. So that we'll have an hour squared in the numerator and the denominator. And now that we've got that taken care of, we can convert our inches into feet. And we've got the usual one foot for 12 inches conversion factor. And now if we do a quick dimensional analysis, which is we're just double checking all our units to make sure everything will cancel out that we want, we'll see that the inches cancel out, we'll see our hour squares cancel out, and now if we multiply everything out together, we're going to get 167 pound mass times foot per second squared. All right, so we, got, we have successfully converted into pound mass times foot per second squared. So the next part is we're going to convert into our pound force. I know, I, I might have leaked that a little earlier. So now we're converting into our pound force by using our pound mass times foot per second squared. So we've got 167 pound mass times foot per second squared. We're going to use our conversion factor that's at the top of the slide. So we've got one pound force is equal to 32.174 pound mass times foot per second squared. And now if we look, do another quick dimensional analysis, making sure our units cancel out, we'll see the pound mass times foot per second squared do cancel out. And now we're gonna see that, that 167 is going to convert into 5.19 pound force. All right, well, way to go, we got through that. And so that's gonna wrap up our, our section on units and unit conversions. And so just to recap, we talked about some units, talked about a couple of different systems, the SI and the, the SI system and the US customary American engineering system, imperial units. We did some unit conversions with practice problems and we discussed weight and what that all means. And so I just wanna say thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.